Hello everybody, I'm Coach Eleanor. For more information about me, look in the description below. This video is with Professor Sam Vakneen. He teaches at universities all over the world. If you want to have more information about him, look in the description. I put all the information. If you like this video, then like this video. And if you have any questions for me or for him, put it in the description below. And who knows, your question is going to be in our videos. I also heard about the narcissistic cycle. The cycle that starts with love bombing. Can you explain something about it? Yeah, I was, it I was actually the first to describe the narcissistic cycle in 1995. Okay. Um, I, borrowed, I borrowed a few concepts, put them together. The cycle starts with um, idealization or actually co-idealization. Um, the narcissist needs to feel that he is special and ideal in any way. And so he chooses a partner he chooses a, a potential source of narcissistic supply, which he calls an intimate partner. <laughs> and then he idealizes her. Now, why would he idealize her? Because if she is ideal and she is in his life, then he's ideal. For example, if his partner is the most intelligent woman on earth and she chose to be with him, that means that he is the most intelligent man on earth. Yeah? So it's a process of co-idealization. The core idealization is done through love bombing and grooming. And love bombing and grooming involve a very, very poisonous and nefarious tactic. The narcissist shows the intimate partner her, her idealized image. He exposes her to her idealized image. And the partner falls in love with her idealized image. Many women, if you talk to them, many victims and so on, they would say, I love the way that he loved me. Or I love the way that he saw me. Uh, or I love the way that he talked about me. So the, the, the target or the victim, which would become the intimate partner, she falls in love actually not with the narcissist, but with herself as seen through the eyes of the narcissist. In other words, the narcissist infects the intimate partner with narcissism. She falls in love with herself, with her idealized image. And then following this stage, the idealization persists. Now, the problem with the idealization is that the narcissist cannot relate to external objects. Exactly like the psychotic, he has difficulty to relate to external objects. And that's why Otto Kemble in 1975 suggested that borderline disorders and narcissistic disorders are forms of psychosis. That's why it's called borderline. It's on the border with psychosis. Oh, okay. So he said they're forms of psychosis and he was right. Mm -hmm. The narcissist cannot, cannot interact with external objects because of abandonment, anxiety, grandiosity, and so on. So he takes these objects and he converts them into internal objects in a process that I call snapshotting. The clinical term is introjection. He introjects external objects. He puts them in his mind. So if I were to interact with you on an intimate basis, let's say, I would take a photograph of you, a snapshot. I would put it in my mind. And from that moment on, I will continue to interact with your snapshot, not with you. You are gone. I continue to interact with my internal object because then I feel safe. My internal object will not abandon me, will mm -hmm. not criticize me, will not challenge me, will not, it's a safe object. Mm -hmm. So I will go into my mind and continue to interact with Ilianor in my mind only because the Ilianor out there is dangerous, is threatening to my balance, to my stability. Mm -hmm. But this creates a problem because the snapshot doesn't change. It is a static representation. It is an avatar, like an icon on a smartphone screen. Mm -hmm. it, does, it never changes. But you, you change. You travel, you meet new people, you grow, you develop, you disagree. You, I mean, you change all the time. Mm -hmm. So gradually, there is a gap opening between the real you and your representation in, in my mind. There's a big gap opening. And when you diverge from the, your representation in the narcissist mind, 
the narcissist gets frustrated, angry at you, and aggressive because you refuse to be static. You refuse to be the snapshot. You insist to be autonomous, agentic, with agency. You know, and it infuriates the narcissist. He's rageful. He wants to destroy you. And he really wants to destroy you. He converts you to a persecutory object. You're like an object that is persecuting him, like an enemy. Mm -hmm. And then there is a process called devaluation. The narcissist needs to get rid of you because you become a source of pain and you become a threat. So he needs to get rid of you. But how to get rid of you? He idealizes you. So uh, how, how can he explain to himself that he made a mistake? I mean, narcissists never make mistakes. Mm -hmm. They're infallible. They're perfect. They're godlike. They never make mistakes. But now he wants to devalue you, and that means that he was wrong. So what he says, I was right then. She had changed. It's not the same woman. It's another. Mm -hmm. she, she changed so dramatically. I don't recognize her. It's not the same woman. Mm -hmm. that I had idealized. And this is called devaluation. And then after the devaluation, the narcissist gets rid of it. So, and this is called discard. This is the cycle that I first described in 1995. Okay. More or less. So it's, it's not, um, it's a, a good trick to say, okay, I'm internalizing uh, the woman, but it's not a good trick because yeah, they wake up and they see, oh, she has an own opinion, uh, she's changed. And so they, they, they are not aware of that they internalize it. No, they're not aware. They're not aware. In introjection, introjection is unconscious process. Yeah. yeah so they're not aware. Yeah. Even if they do it over and over again, they don't I didn't go. I didn't go. I didn't go into all the details because, for example, there is something called projective introjection so, and projective ident identification. So... The narcissist, when, when you start to dive, to deviate, when you start to, when there's a, a sunlight, when there's a gap opening between you and the snapshot, mm -hmm. the narcissist tries to force you back into the snapshot. And he's doing it using two mechanisms. One is known as projective identification and the other is known as projective introjection. So he tries to force you to behave in a way that conforms to the snapshot. And then he tries to make you believe it. He tries to, and this is what we call gaslighting. <laughs> okay. he, he tries to change your behavior by changing your perception of reality. This is projective identification. And then he tries to make you believe it, to make you feel that it came from you, not from him. And this is called projective introjection. So, but I didn't go into all this. It's much more complex than I described. Mm -hmm. But in a nutshell, this is it. These are the more or less the dynamics. Yeah. And in a way, it's like that, that he, uh, in his perception, you changed. So yes. in his, in his perception, it's, it's a truth. So yeah, I can, not, I can not only you change, but you change malevolently. Mm -hmm. You did it on purpose. You changed oh. on purpose to frustrate him and to, to attack him and to, because narcissists have paranoid ideation. They're hypervigilant. Okay. Yeah. They are what we call hypervigilant. They scan all the time. Are you insulting me? Are you attacking me? Are you challenging me? Are you all the time they're scanning all the time yeah. to see who is attacking them, who is insulting them, who and this is called hypervigilance. So if you disagree with the narcissist or if you just um, go to work mm -hmm. and come late, return late, or whatever, you are doing this on purpose. You're doing this mm -hmm. to destroy the snapshot, you're doing this to destabilize his internal system. Because here's the problem. If one snapshot is destroyed, the whole concept of snapshot is destroyed. It's like the black swan. You can say all swans are white, but then there's one black swan and the sentence all swans are white is wrong. Mm -hmm. So if one snapshot collapses, the very idea of snapshot, the very concept or mechanism of snapshot is in doubt. And then all his mind disintegrates, falls apart. That's why narcissists react disproportionately mm -hmm. because you are not threatening it's not just a mean small misunderstanding or for them even the smallest misunderstanding threatens the totality of the internal space the mind which is populated with snapshots with internal objects yeah everything you do threatens the narcissist existence if you withhold supply if you disagree with him if you everything you do so devaluation is 
inevitable. Yeah. And There's no way is to avoid it, it. Is it like they wake up, really wake up, and in shock, and they want to change it? That they, uh, by this kind of situations, after the cycle is round, then they it's wake up? It's not a bad up. metaphor. It's not a bad metaphor. The, yeah. the shared fantasy is a dream state. Is a dream state. That's why narcissists do not future fake. Future faking means to promise a future and then to to lie about it. Yeah. Narcissists believe believe that the the fantasy is real, so they are in a dream state. And the devaluation phase is a good analogy. What you just said, the devaluation state is is a little like waking up yeah. and realizing that it's not been a it's, it's not becoming a nightmare. Um, mm-hmm. Everything collapses, everything falls apart. The shared fantasy, uh, the 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 internal objects, the, everything falls apart. With the and so the Nazis must get rid of you. You're really you become really threatening. Yeah, and, and if it happens all over again in in his life, eh, waking up, dreaming, waking up, don't yeah. they think, oh, eh, maybe it's me because it's always the same with me? Maybe I do something wrong. The narcissists have what we call alloplastic defenses. That means they they tend to blame other people for anything wrong. Mishaps, Mm -hmm. misfortunes, failures, defeats, uh, everything is someone else's fault. Uh, Someone someone is envious of the narcissist. And so this creates with the narcissist, ironically, it creates an external locus of control. The narcissist feels that his life is controlled from the outside. That's why he is so furious. That's why he he has narcissistic rage. Mm -hmm. Because he feels that you control his life and you are then abusing your control by diverging or deviating from the snapshot. He gave you control of his life. That's a responsibility. You should remain static. You should remain frozen forever. You should be a mummy, Egyptian mummy, you know? So, and a mummy, a mummy like a mother and Egyptian mummy. So these are the elements of the shared fantasy. The shared fantasy is a space of suspension. It's a space of absence. It's a space where both the narcissist and you become emptiness, become non-existent, and are replaced by narratives. You're repl- both of you are replaced by narratives. Mm-hmm. And if you undermine or sabotage a narrative, that's a really, really evil thing to do. You must be evil to do this. Thank you.